الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن والاه اللهم لا علم إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الكرام ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم The topic tonight is I entitled it uh, The Education of the Heart and I'm going to do more I think a traditional type uh, exposition inshallah of that subject Traditionally when the scholars uh, be- began uh, a topic, what they would do was define their terms. And so you always have in the books, like if it's a book filled with usul, they'll say usul al din, and then they'll say al asr huwa ma yubna alayhi ghayruhu, wa din huwa al inqiyad, wa al islam li awamir illah. So they begin that way, they'll say what the definition of the terms are so that everybody is speaking the same language because one of the interesting things about human beings is despite the fact that we do share common languages we really uh, tend to speak with different terms and that's why education in many ways is learning to define terms so the first question if we say the education of the heart is what is education that's the first question that should be asked and for as Muslims, which I think most people in here are, when Muslims look at things, it's always good to look at the Arabic words. Because we believe that Arabic, the dominant opinion, and the opinion of Imam Siyuti and others, is that Al-Lughar Arabiya Tawqifiya. And what that means is, Arabic is literally from Allah. Arabic is not like other languages in that, which doesn't negate the fact that possibly other languages uh, were designed uh, for revelation, like Sanskrit perhaps, and Hebrew, and Chinese, I don't know. Uh, obviously the Torah was in Hebrew, so we would assume, but whether or not Hebrew has the same ruling that the Arabic language does, I would say Allahu A'lam. But, and even about the Arabic language, the ulama say Allahu A'lam. But the belief is, is that the Arabs did not make up their language through conventional use. In language theory, you have different types of theories. The one I always remember is the ding-dong theory, which is a linguistic theory that originally language came out of just imitating sounds. So somebody heard a bell, and and it sounded like a ding-dong, and so they called it a ding-dong. How it got to become a bell, I don't know. You'd have to ask a linguist. But uh, the Arabs, for instance, if you whisper, they say waswasa. And you can hear in the whispering, waswasa. And you can hear that. So you'll find that in language. Qalqala uh, in Arabic means to shake. And you can feel it with the word qalqala. It's like things are shaken. If you look at the word khafif, it has a light feeling. Thaqil has a heavy feeling. Khafif means light. Thaqil means heavy. And there's whole books written on that topic. So it's good to go into the Arabic language and see how the, how the Arabs describe uh, education. The Arabs have two dominant words they use for education. And they have ministries now that are called the ministries of education. And, and you always have to wonder when you have ministries for education why nobody's getting educated. Like here they have a department of education. And... <coughs> Surprisingly enough, the system seems to be running up to a point. So I'm always amazed that they, people do get through universities and learn something because the planes are, seem to be flying. So whoever the person that trained in how to design a plane, he got something. It would appear that way anyway. But unless you're flying Air Mauritani or something like that. <laughs> and, and then it's ala barakatillah, right? <laughs> That's what we say in Mauritania when you get on the plane. The only comforting thing about flying a Mauritanian airplane in Mauritania is it's safer than the roads. 
Alhamdulillah. So the Arabs, they say tarbiya and they say ta'lim. And they call the ministries, we saw it tarbiya or ta'lim. If you look at the first word, tarbiya, the root of it, rabia means to grow. And in fact, some of our grammarians and uh, our philologists, people that study the origins of words, believe that the word rabb, which is Allah's name, Rabbul Alameen, is from the same root. In other words, Allah is al murabbi. He's the one that causes things to grow, humans to grow, to bring them to their... He nurtures them. And that's why uh, Tawheed uh, is calling people to that reminder that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's doing everything. So, tarbiya means to nurture, yurabbi. And, and a parent is called a murabbi. The mother is called a murabbiya. The father is called a murabbi. And so parents, the beginning of education begins with the first murabbi, that is the parent. And then, and this is why if you look in Surah An-Nas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Begins with Rabb, and then goes to Meliki nas to Melik, and then Ilahi nas Because this is the progression of human understanding. The first understanding of Allah is as Rabb. And then, then once you move out, of that understanding, you move into the legislative nature of Allah. In other words, that He's a shari', He's medicine nas as well. He's not just the nurturer like your parents, He's also the political authority. And then beyond that, His, his realm transcends the world. He's the ilah, He's the source of uh, our being and also the object of our uh, worship, our ubudiyah is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the second term that's used is ta'lim. And the word in Arabic, alima ya'lamu, at its, the root word alam in fact means mountain. One of the meanings is mountain. Alam, which is a masdar, uh, means mountain. And what an alam is, is it's a sign. And the word in Arabic for the world is alam. Alim is the knower with a kasra. Alam is what is known. Now some say that it means what we know Allah by. That's why it's called alam because like tabi' or khatam is what you seal something with. Khatam is a, what you seal something with. Khatim is the one who seals it. So alam is the thing by which you know something. And the world is the thing by which we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, ta'lim is to imprint a meaning into somebody or something. Alama means literally to put your alama, your sign on something. And the idea is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put His sign on the creation. Alam al-insan. He has imprinted in man. Wafiyanfusikum, afaratubsirun, in your own selves, don't you see? It's imprinted everywhere. The problem in this culture, for instance, the negation of Allah is not a negation like some people assume. It's not a negation. When they negate Allah in all their books, like when they say, then nature did this and nature did that, they never talk about Allah. The reason for that, and a lot of people don't understand this is that there is a, what they call a scientific method. And that scientific method, which came out of 18th century England, refuses to accept the supernatural. Anything outside of what can be seen, felt, touched, and studied and analyzed is not allowed into the equation when we're trying to deduce where things come from or what did what or what made what. So it's not 